Hey everyone, Derek here from Wayscript. In this tutorial video, I want to show you how we can start using Airtable on Wayscript. Let's get started. Starting out, we'll sign into Wayscript and we'll click on create a new script. I'll call this one Airtable example. And then we'll click create. To start using Airtable, we would drag in the Airtable module into our workflow. To set this up, you'll need some information from your Airtable account. We'll click on select an API key and then add an account. Here we see that we need to fill in the workspace name, the API key, and the base key. Sign into your Airtable account and then go to the homepage. This is what my homepage looks like. And let's just create a new workspace for this tutorial. We'll call it example. We'll add a base and let's just use a template so we get some pre-generated information. We'll use a simple applicant tracker. So I'll click on use template. Then let's rename this and we'll call it something like applicant tracker. The information that we need to gather is the workspace name. We call this one example. So we'll put that in now. Example. The API key we need to get from our account settings. So we'll go to account. And then once you go to account, your API key will be shown here. I'll copy this and paste it over. Ideally, you want to keep this secret, so don't show this to other people. For this tutorial, I'll just regenerate mine after this one is done. So we'll copy this and paste it as our API key. And finally, we need the base key. This is included in your Airtable API URL, so we'll go pull it from there. We'll go back to account and click on Airtable API. Once here, we have a selection of databases on our account. We'll choose the one that we're working with, which was under the example workspace, the application tracker. We'll click on it, and this will give us the docs on how we can use this API. Don't worry if this is confusing to you. We try to make this simple at Wayscript. So what we do to get the base key is we just go down to this URL here and grab everything right here. We need this base key so we know where to send your API request to. So we'll take this, copy it, and paste it here. Doing this will give us access to all of the tables in that database. So we'll click on submit, and now we have one last step of setup that we need to do. We see that we need a table name. The table name will be located within the database, so we'll click on application tracker, and the table name will be here. If we wanted all of these applicants, we would use this table name. Let's do that now. Applicants is the name of the table, so we'll click it and then click off. We see once we input this table name, we get all of the columns as potential outputs, and we can select these to pull information from that table. Clicking on name, we should now have an output variable called name. It defines this output variable as a list of any type. We don't get any of the information from the table because the default mode is filtered. If we wanted the information, we could go and select the results type and put in all rows. Once we get all the rows, we see that all of the names are displayed in the output variables that are in our table here. So now we know how to get information from our Airtable database. Let's see how we can add new information to it. We'll close that variables panel and where Wayscript asks us, what would you like to do? Instead of get records, let's say create a new record. We're given the option to either build data or input raw JSON. If you wanted to input JSON, we have a JSON module that you can use for that. You would pull in the JSON module above your Airtable module, and you can upload JSON files and then read them in to Airtable. If you wanted to build the data instead, we could go back to Airtable, have build data as the submission type, and then put in the fields. These column and field names would be the same as what they are on your Airtable database table. So we'd have name, stage, applying for, and so on. We would put name here, and then the value that we wanted here. The power of Wayscript is that we can use variables that we get from other modules and put them in here. So for example, let's say we had some module giving us a variable above. We'll just use create variable in this instance, but let's say variable name is equal to my name. Once we create this variable, we now see that we have it down here. We can do this with any module, not just the create variable module, but this is a quick example that I can show you very briefly. Now clicking on Airtable, we have this name column that we specified, and we can pull in that variable below and use that 
as the name column to input into our Airtable database. Like I said, you can pull this data from a ton of modules that we have available to you. Now we know how to get information from our Airtable, how to add a new row to it, and let's see how we can update existing rows. Back into the Airtable module, instead of create a new record, let's see how we can update a row. We have two different update types. One is called patch. The patch update type just updates the one column that you're trying to update. So if you leave other columns unspecified, they will not be changed. The put update type, however, if you leave columns unspecified, they will be empty within your table. Let's just use patch for this example. To get these record IDs, we already know how to pull information. We'll go and get records, and let's pull record IDs down at the bottom. Expanding these variables again, let's take this record ID and we'll change it within our table using WayScript. We'll click on update a row. We'll do the patch type so we don't get rid of all the rest of the information. We'll change the record ID and let's change the name column to my name using this variable that we created above. Once we have all of that, let's run our program by clicking on run main. Once we've done this, let's go back to our error table and we can see that that record ID has been updated to my name using WayScript. There's plenty more that you can do with this module. I just wanted to show you very briefly on how we can get this set up and start pulling data and changing data. In the next videos, I'll tell you more about how we can use Airtable. And that's it for this one. I hope it's useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let us know and we'll try our best to help you out. Until next time.